Hello everyone, this is Randy Ewart from CT Sped Math Dude. In this video, I, I want to talk to you about uh, shopping for grocery, uh, for ingredients for an item that you a uh, student wants to make. And grocery shopping in general, uh, let alone finding all the ingredients for a specific uh, item is sneaky challenging, both in terms of the, the logistics, the act of shopping and ingredients and making something, but also uh, the fact that this is dense with maths and it's uh, sneaky dense. So let's take a look. So I have a blog post addressing this. Uh, and this is an excerpt, uh, this photo shows an excerpt from uh, an activity of, of training a student on how to uh, um, find the ingredients and start shopping for the ingredients. And so the idea is the student was uh, had a list of ingredients here on a Google Doc. Uh, I, I created the Google Doc and that way we could uh, uh, both edit it simultaneously and see what it is we were working with. He would go find the ingredients, copy, uh, crop and paste the ingredients. Uh, but then he, the mathy part then is he had to start comparing. He had to compare uh, the amount, the quantity that he was purchasing with the amount that he needed. And you can already start to see the challenge. You have a fraction, you have cups versus box uh, ounces. Uh, and not only that, the student could find it challenging to distinguish between the price and the quantity and the unit price because the student may just see three different numbers. And so they have to make sense of that. And then they have to compare. They have to compare 12 ounces with uh, uh, one and three fourths cups. And one of the ways they can do that is use a, a, a conversion calculator. Um, you can use an app. Uh, we chose, we chose uh, the Google one. The challenge here is when you uh, search for the Google for the for the uh, unit calculator, and you want ounces to cups. They have to student has to know: Am I going to go ounces first and convert to cups, or am I going to go with cups and convert to ounces? And when they pull up the calculator, this will be a one to start with, and they have to understand then that they don't want one; they want twelve. And then. They get an answer that's a decimal, but they had one and three fourths. Now they got to compare the two. Even if you convert it to a decimal, you still have to compare uh, two decimal answers. And then you have to determine, well, once I compare, do I have enough? And then if I don't have enough, how much more do I need to get? Now, in addition to all that, you have all the logistical tasks of shopping at a grocery store. And I have a link to this. And I actually have a list of, of tasks that are required. And when I've taken students out to the grocery store, uh, some, some challenges were finding a grocery cart, knowing that you should get a grocery cart or get a, get a, a basket, uh, knowing where items are. But not only do you have to find the items, but what, or you have to know where what aisle the items are on, but then you also have to know where to look on the aisle. And if someone has uh, uh, any type of executive functioning or visual issues, uh, they don't have experience with this. Then they're looking on both sides of the aisle, up and down. And then when you find the section, you got to scan up and down and look at all the types and all the different brands. And the and and then when you're actually comparing, you got to look at like expiration dates and and which brand is better, and if there's a sale, and what's the unit cost, and this one's bigger, it costs more, this one costs less, but it's, you get less stuff. Uh, I had students leaving their grocery cart in the middle of the aisle and blocking people, which uh, a lot of people do that, right? And then finding an aisle uh, to pay, and then knowing how to navigate that aisle. I had one uh, student that was too close behind the uh, customer in front, uh, I had a student trying to count out money and drop the money, but she didn't realize it. And I watched for a little bit before I actually told her. Uh, be, and then having the whole counting out the money and then do you count out change? And what if you don't have enough change or do you pay, do you pay just bills? What if you don't have enough ones? Do you uh, just give a, an extra five and get extra change? 
How do you know you, didn't, you got the proper change returned? Uh, and then if you're going to use a card, when they're using a card, there's some abstract thinking of, of understanding that that number um, that you're paying is a quantity. It's, it's a certain amount of money that you can count out, but they have to do that mentally because they don't actually see the money. So there's a lot here. So uh, what I recommend, and I put this in the, the, uh, um, the last part of the blog here, is the life skills math is much more complex and challenging than people realize. And if you know that that's an area that your student needs help with, uh, it could take a long time, depending on the student. Uh, I've worked with students where it may take them a year to learn how to count money. And then if that's the case, imagine then trying to do comparison shopping and all the other dense, uh, uh, the dense math uh, tasks that I just described. So I recommend that uh, once you get an idea that uh, life skills math is going to be a, a focal point and college two year, four years not, then I would say worry less about the curriculum uh, math and focus on the life skills math. Focus on the math your child needs and understand that you may need to, to back plan a, a, a long way in order to give them enough time to progress through all the life skills math. So as always, uh, I wish you well. Good luck with uh, you and your students and see you around.